Hello friends, today I want to try a different video format where I go through one of my tracks, show you how it was made and uh, explain some of my thinking behind uh, some of the choices that I made. The track that I want to talk about is called Consumed. It was originally, it was originally created in uh, January 2022 and I performed it live on uh, YouTube. It was um, one of my first ever uh, live performances uh, that I recorded for YouTube. The live version is quite uh, different from the version that I released officially. It has been out for a couple of months and uh, in general it received uh, quite a warm welcome from uh, people that listen to my music. The track is uh, in G minor and um, it's at uh, 110 BPM, which uh, places it into sort of uh, organic uh, down-tempo uh, category, but it uh, definitely has some influences from uh, melodic techno. It has uh, a bit of a dark vibe, uh, some gritty, noisy sound, uh, lots of saturation and a lot of space. I use Reason as my DAW, but uh, all of the techniques and tips that you will see in this video can be easily used in any other digital audio workstation. I'm a very strong believer that um, it is much more important to focus on understanding what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it, instead of um, thinking about the tools that you will use. All right, let's go. Before we jump into specific tracks, I would like to say a couple of words about my uh, effect channels, uh, so the send return channels in Reason. Uh, I use a lot of uh, send return in my projects and um, the general guideline for myself I have is that uh, when, um, when the effect um, being reverb or delay, for example, is a part of the sound design, then it goes to the channel insert and when uh, the effect is a part of the overall atmosphere uh, of the track then it goes to the one of the send effects and um, all all instruments or groups of instruments uh, get uh, sent to these uh, effects in order to create some kind of uh, coherent um, atmosphere for the track. So let's take a look at the at the, my effects. I have uh, Valhalla Vintage Verb, which is uh, running uh, a room reverb, room algorithm. I think it's a small room, which is uh, used uh, for drums. Next we have uh, Space uh, Supermassive, Valhalla Supermassive, which is a big space. Uh, next, I have uh, Chorus. This is a, a pretty good emulation of uh, Roland's uh, Dimension D Chorus effect, um, and um, I like using it as a send effect. Up next uh, is a Plate Reverb from Arturia. Shimmer. Gotta have shimmer, shimmer. Uh, next is uh, it's supposed to be a Valhalla room, but it's not installed, so it's missing. And then the last one is uh, my favorite uh, tape delay or tape delay emulation from Arturia. You will also notice that uh, I have post EQ and the compression after each effect. Um, I like to. EQ out uh, low end and some of the high end from the effect returns and I also add um, a little bit of side, ch side chain to all of my um, effect uh, channels so that they're ever so slightly breathing together with the kick. The whole track is uh, built around this uh, uh, bass pad or drone pad which incidentally was also the the main idea behind the track 
uh, when I first uh, started working on it. Um, I was playing around with the synth and um, it sounded like a good underlayer to create uh, something on top of. Uh, it was recorded using uh, Behringer Pro 1, which is an um, emulation of uh, Sequential Pro 1. Uh, when I was um, recording the final take, um, printing the audio, I, um, I used my hands to modify uh, filter and the LFO parameters um, for the duration of the whole track, because the synth doesn't accept CC messages for those, for those controls. If we take a look at the processing, it is uh, split into two channels. So one channel is playing the main part, and the second is a parallel channel, which is um, playing the high high end part of it. So this is where the delay is. I didn't want to add delay to the low end part of it. So I split it into parallel channels. So together they sound like this. Next we have this uh, ambient pad, which uh, together with the drone sound uh, forms the, the harmonic foundation for this track. Uh, the chords uh, change a little bit between the first drop and the second drop. The second drop is a bit brighter, a bit happier. Uh, but uh, they are pretty much the same. I specifically used um, diets or two note chords as they're called uh, so that um, I could uh, layer other melodic elements on top of those chords uh, without creating too many conflicts. This is a little bit of the theme that uh, you will see throughout this track is that I, instead of using huge pads, uh, big chords with one sound, I created different layers of uh, sounds uh, which eventually form a complete chord but uh, using different timbres. So for this guy, not much processing here. This is a uh, Dune 3, I think it's one of the modified presets. Uh, just a little bit of EQ, uh, nothing, nothing special here. Uh, then we have uh, something interesting here. This is this is uh, something that I recorded using uh, Behringer Model D, which is an emulation of uh, Minimoog. Um, it has a very high rate uh, LFO on it. On, on its filter, so it sounds like uh, it's uh, screaming. So I call it screaming, screaming pad. As far as processing, nothing much is happening here. It has a little bit of uh, tape effect on it. This is, by the way, if in case uh, in case you don't know, this is a free tape emulation, which is really good. It's um, it's not the easiest plugin to use. It has a lot of settings. But if you understand what they mean, you can you can get really good results. Uh, yeah, some uh, tape emulation, some uh, echo and uh, sidechain, of course. And um, this here is a recording of uh, my uh, hardware sampler, uh, ESI 4000 uh, from Emu. It's a very old sampler. Um, I think I sampled I sampled this uh, uh, sound at uh, 22 kilohertz originally to reduce its um, sort of uh, sonic quality, and uh, it made this um, gritty sound which I uh, like. So together, these sounds, the pads and the, and the drone, they make up the chord, all the chords that are um, playing th throughout the track. In addition to them we have two lead pads which uh, play the main lead. Both, them, both of them are uh, Dune 3. This is my uh, one, of my, one of my favorite uh, VST synths uh, for um, 
leads and pads. I love it and I use it all the time. Again, a little bit of um, tape. And this is a free emulation of um, a L2 limiter from Waves, I believe. I don't use Wave plugins, I uh, never have. And um, yeah, this is something that uh, I use sometimes instead. Uh, okay, before we're done with melodic elements, let's briefly talk about uh, piano. Which is uh, processed pianos. Uh, Reason's uh, very own rack extension, really nice. Uh, this is again two parallel channels with a bunch of processing. Um, by the way, this is a pretty old uh, pro project, as I mentioned, and um, a lot of the stuff uh, that you see here has been done for over a year ago. I don't fully remember why I was doing this uh, and uh, chances are if I was doing this again today I would do things differently but it is what it is um, it still sounds nice so I guess uh, uh, something was done right the arpeggio is very simple and without any processing it sounds like this very harsh so it has a little bit of saturation very little right it's only 16 percent then reverb compression i think it's pretty fast compression yeah it's very fast compression um yeah some soft love and uh, side chain Uh, on on the parallel channel, I've, yeah, it's uh, just uh, some delays to add more space to the sound. You can barely hear it, and it is also side chained. All right, up next we have um, another arpeggio sound, which comes in at the second part of the track. This is recorded from uh, Behringer K2. Uh, it's an um, emulation of Cork MS20, and uh, that particular synthesizer is uh, known for, uh, well, it's known for many things, but uh, it has an ability to really cut through the mix and uh, project the sound, and uh, it also has an ability to create really, really nasty sounds. Uh, many people love it for it. Processing wise, uh, not much happening here. A little bit, uh, a little bit um, space. It's called City Street uh, Space. I'm not sure. I think I think I just use it use it because I liked it. Analog saturation, fairly fast compression, delay. Dub station uh, is uh, one of my favorite uh, delay stations or delay plugins. Um, I hardly ever use presets, it's very easy to get uh, great results with. Quadrobox, on the other hand, is a, is a VST that I haven't paid much attention to previously. I think I got it for free uh, when I purchased another plugin. I think it was a bundle deal and I didn't even install it uh, initially. But um, recently I have been experimenting with it. And it, it is actually a really cool delay plugin. Uh, it uh, lets you play four four different repetitions of uh, of the original sound, and you can um, you can play with uh, both time and pitch information of uh, each repeat. So it um, gives you a lot of possibilities uh, to make interesting delays. Sooth and compression. So this is what it sounds like with processing and this is a naked sound. Yeah, yeah I think there's a lot of emphasis on creating space for this arp arp uh, arpeggio. 
One final piece of a melodic content that uh, we should talk about is the lead sound that we can hear in the beginning and end of the track. It's a very mellow uh, melody which um, supports the composition in the beginning when um, there isn't there isn't much happening and it was also one of the first ideas that i uh, came up with uh, on top of the drone the original part was uh, sequenced on uh, arturia kiste pro again and i recorded this uh, media data uh, while i was uh, performing the track Later, I decided to print it uh, because um, it involves uh, some uh, random LFO mo modulation, if modulating filter drives and um, some delay feedback, and at least some of the modulation is based on random uh, LFO. And uh, when I have things like this, I tend to uh, commit to audio at some point, just so that the version the versions are not too different from uh, one bounce to another okay let's move to the dub chords uh, they are used in this track to build up energy in the breakdown and towards the second drop um, i used the vcv rack to to create the the sound and then i uh, printed uh, or printed the final version to audio and uh, did some more uh, processing this way if we look at the vcv rack patch here it is it's not particularly difficult patch to make it has a couple of oscillators envelopes uh, filter some saturation and um, and uh, some effects. Uh, the interesting part here is that it has three different outputs and uh, those outputs are uh, routed into different channels. So I have a separate output for the dry signal, uh, one output for the reverb and one output for the cloud textures, um, which is a granular echo kind of thing. And together they yeah, they sound like this. Here we have a side chain from from the ARP. Yeah. So it's actually side chain from this uh, synth. Every time the ARP plays, the dub chords uh, dock a little bit. I do this kind of thing quite a bit uh, in my music, in my productions, in order to fit more elements into the same space of the mix. After the chords were printed to audio, I did uh, more editing. I um, changed some stabs around. I muted some of them, you can see. Uh, and um, basically I was trying to create uh, more accents so that um, this part feels like a build-up to the drop that comes afterwards. <music> These are the cloud, cloud uh, textures.
Okay, now having covered the melodic content of this uh, track, let's move over to the drums and percussion. The drums were uh, programmed uh, using uh, Arturia Keystep Pro. Um, I wanted to play this uh, track uh, live on YouTube uh, and I didn't want to have a pre-programmed um, drums in the sequencer. So instead I uh, went ahead and I programmed the tracks on the, on my um, external sequencer and when i was performing the track uh, on youtube and recording that session i also recorded all of the midi information so all of this uh dr midi drum information was uh, recorded live from keystep pro for sampler i um use kong and um i uh, i prefer to route each uh, channel of the Kong into individual mix channel in order to have uh, full control over my drums. Uh, in addition to Kong, I also used a few loops from um, Loop Cloud and uh, we'll take a look at them a little bit later. Uh, kick is from uh, Kick2, nothing uh, exciting here, it's uh, just a kick. I believe I have some EQ on it. Yeah, it's pretty heavy EQ, getting rid of the mids and uh, high end. I use this uh, free band equalizer to uh, automate um, my kick and uh, also the bass uh, when I need when I need to do, for example, a, uh, a high pass uh, or. Um, low pass for whatever reason. Other than kick we have um, cassava, close hat, bongas, the clap and some percussion sounds. I believe yeah on the, on this guy I have a LFO which is uh, yeah it's um, changing the decay uh, decay time of the sample randomly this is the LFO that, that is controlling it and that's just uh, I do this sort of thing very often to give more uh, life and uh, depth to the percussion all right uh, next uh, in the drums we have uh, the clap It's pretty big clap. I wanted uh, it to be fairly present in the mix and uh, quite uh, dominant. So the processing is uh, quite simple. It's just a little bit of chorus. And uh, very important here is the clipper. The clipper reduces the peak level of the clap quite significantly and it makes uh, life uh, so much easier for the clippers and um, limiters up the chain. If we play it with the clipper enabled, we see that it's um, peak level at um, minus 18 dBs. If I disable the clipper and say it's jumping to quite high actually, some, I mean, yeah, minus 10, minus 11. So it's a significant difference. And by, by doing this, we are gaining a lot of headroom uh, without uh, changing the sound too much. And uh, if we play it in the mix, it's really not that apparent. Okay, let's take a look at uh, some loops. What is going on here? Aha, this is the... Yeah, this is the symbol, right symbol, uh, which I used to build up the energy in the second part of the B2 section. 
Why do I have? Aha, uh -huh, I, I got it. Yeah. So this is I'm using this uh, this LFO here as a, a envelope uh, generator, I guess. Without any processing, this uh, sounds like this. This loop. So it's just uh, eight notes. Right. Without a side chain. So what is happening here? Uh, this LFO is uh, generating a ramp up waveform, and this uh, signal is uh, used to control the gain of this uh, gain device. So it's uh, bringing up the gain, and we get this uh, sort of uh, fade in effect. And together with the side chain, it gets pumping. This is the bus for uh, all of the metal instruments. It's called metal. It's it's, it's just a group channel for all of the hi-hats and uh, cymbals. I'm adding a little bit of chorus, a little bit of uh, reverb, uh, and uh, yeah, some soothe. Nothing special. Yeah, also has a channel EQ. Let's um, let's take a look at the drum bus. On the drum bus, I have um, very light compression, some uh, saturation, um, a little bit EQ and um, soup in the end. Uh, the last plugin here is the um, is the clipper. I uh, often clip the drum bus uh, in order to make the signal uh, more well behaved when it uh, gets to the final uh, master uh, limiter. So this is uh, this is really all of the percussion. One thing we haven't talked about is the second bass. Um, if we take a look at this, this is uh, this is the sound that was played by uh, Behringer Neutron. Yes, I have a lot of uh, Behringer synths. I uh, love them. They are very simple synths. There, are, there are no bells and whistles. There are no presets, but they um, they sound wonderful, and they're very fun to use. So here we have sound. Yeah, I've, I've used quite a lot of processing on this. Uh, well, what is going on here? Um, right, EQ. Then we have what seems to be, yeah, it's parallel distortion. So I'm using uh, inline mixer to create a parallel distortion effect. And then we have both uh, dry and uh, wet signal from this distortion going into the filter and then it goes into transient shaper i guess i'm adding some attack and it goes into multiband into saturation quite heavy saturation i must say chorus and reverb yes i use reverbs on my bass lines quite often i love legend as an effect you can use it both as a synth which is a which is a great emulation of um, moog sound but um, it also can be used as an effect it has a very simple effect se section but um, it sounds really good and i, I love i love using it on the bass One other interesting thing is that the main bass pad 
is um, actually side chain to the to this bus. Let's see. I tend to use a lot of side chaining in my projects. Uh, it's not very heavy side chaining, uh, but I use a lot of uh, light side chains in order to create more space in the mix. It has uh, become part of my sound, I guess. Uh, I have side chain everywhere. Okay, up next we have uh, a few vocal sounds with some breaths. Nothing special. This is this. These are samples from uh, Loop Cloud, I believe. Forty-six, fifty-six, color sound. There is no other way. I'm using them to add some interest uh, in the breakdown and a uh, bunch of reverb, bunch of delay. Good. So this is this is pretty much uh, everything um, channel-wise. So these are all the tracks. It's not a huge project if you look at the mixer the green channels are uh, leads and pads the dark green are uh, dub chords red stuff is uh, low end information and we have um, the main drone and the bass the, the pulse bass the kick and all of this orange stuff is uh, just various uh, percussion there's a lot of different percussion sounds and if we look at the sequencer you can see it as well that's a lot of different uh, bits and pieces of percussion loops and percussion uh, media information. Effects, a couple of reference tracks, and uh, that's that's about it. Let's take a look at the master channel, because that's also something that could be interesting. So here, um, again, uh, this is an old project. Uh, I might do things differently today, but... Um, that's the way it is with this project. So I'm uh, gaining up the master channel in order to bring a good level into the saturation. Uh, only slight amount of, well, it's not slight, it's 48%, but um, a little bit of saturation. And then we have a multiband compression here, uh, which I... Uh, use very often. I like this uh, compressor quite a bit. I like the way it um, works on the low end. I prefer to to glue the lower end on the on the two bus instead of uh, doing it on a just the kick and bass uh, bus. Then we are going into optical compressor which is uh, quite slow. Um, I don't use it as much for uh, compression as for uh, sound. It has a transformer emulation, which is quite pleasant. And I also found that this plugin is uh, excellent for uh, driving the volume up without adding any kind of uh, unwanted artifacts. It uh, just warms up the sound. Uh, so I have quite a bit of gain. Actually, you can see that when we are playing you can see that it's outputting more than it's um, letting in, so it's actually gaining up. Uh, then we have a pull tech uh, equalizer here. I think I'm mainly using it for the high pass uh, filter. Low end is uh, unused, it's off. I'm attenuating uh, 200 uh, hertz something. And uh, also I'm attenuating 10k and uh, boosting the shelf at um, 20k or something, 18k. And then we're getting into the limiting and the clipping stage. Uh, first I have a Newfangled Audio Saturate, which is an excellent clipper. It's uh, driving the signal quite, quite a bit, but it's not uh, adding any crap to the <laughs> to the sound uh, next we have an another clipper in a hard clipper mode which is um, this is a reasons uh, rack, rack extension and um, another really good uh, really precise uh, tool for uh, clipping I'm adding a little bit of drive here 
and then we're getting into into the limiter curiosity i also have a um, old version the, the live version that i played on youtube so we can compare it to to this one it's quite different and also reference track Yeah, by the way, this is my uh, monitoring channel. I have a video about this. I will add link to the video in case you guys are interested. This lets me monitor my uh, main mix, my references, without uh, reference tracks being affected by the master channel, obviously. Well, we are nearly done. Thank you for staying with me all the way to the end of the video. It probably means that you found it at least entertaining and maybe you found it also useful if you if you did please let me know in the comments also let me know if you would like to see more content like this for me if you would like to listen to the original version of uh, consumed i will uh, add the link to the video up here all the streaming links will be down in the description thank you for watching the video and take care